This afternoon, the National Petroleum Authority says there could be more price hikes at the pumps. Already, oil marketing firm Goyom has increased four prices at the pumps, selling a litre of diesel and petrol at seven cities. This is all playing out as the MPA made known the reintroduction of the price stabilisation levy on petroleum products. Here's Abbas Ibrahim Tasunti, the head of pricing at the authority. But the general expectation is that the market, like, it doesn't look good. Um, unfortunately, there are several incidents or many things happening right now that are pushing prices upward. As you are aware, there's a there's tension between Saudi and UAE and the Yemenis, which is causing supply concerns. And that's one of the things that is pushing up prices on the world market. The other thing is this tension between Ukraine and Russia. What this is leading to is that Russia's ability to produce natural gas to the European market is also uh, at threat. So these things combined are affecting um, oil prices and they are moving up. Secondly, um, there's expectation that OPEC should produce more to meet the rising demand. Have, since um, 2020, when price demand fell because of lockdowns, and last year, 2021, economy started opening up. Demand for petroleum products have been rising, and it is for this reason that it's expected that supply will, will, will go up. But unfortunately for OPEC, their supply is not enough to meet demand. So in the, in the short term, what is expected is that prices are on the rise. So that is what is expected on the world. We continue to monitor events at the Palms. Meanwhile, unionized transport operators are set to hold a crucial meeting this Thursday over the increase in transport fares. Joy Business understands that the meeting will bring together officials of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, the GPLTU, and other interest groups. Sources say the operators are, are going ahead with this meeting due to the delays by government to meet them to consider adjustments in fares following the recent increase in petrol products at the pumps. Joy Business is also learning that the commercial operators could, at the meeting, agree on a new transport fare and direct all their members to start to go ahead with the new charges from this weekend. Well, this afternoon, real estate developers and other consumers of electricity that will require certain specialized services from the ECG will have to pay more beginning uh, this, this month. This is because the Electricity Company of Ghana is implementing new service charges. So what are the implications of the increment in the service charges on the average Ghanaian? Here's a report. New service charges will affect nine items. They include straight service, additional load, pole extension, temporary supply and internal monitoring. The charges will vary from 100 CDs to a little above 6,700 CDs, depending on the type of the service charge. However, those who will require a replacement of meters will not pay any fee, but those who want a separate meter will pay for that. These service charges could translate into an increase in rent and the price of housing or real estate in the country. As a result, it will impact on the cost of living since one will need to pay more for renting or acquiring an apartment. These obviously will affect the disposable income of people. Meanwhile, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PRC, will before the end of the first quarter of this year announce new tariffs for electricity and water. Let's bring in Executive Secretary of Greater, Samuel Amegaibo. Thanks for your time. How could this impact the price of rent and the sale of houses? Thank you, and thank you for the opportunity. I think um, what is happening is that this is a cost that is normally one off to the developer. And so in terms of its significance, it may, be, it may not be too, deep, uh, too much. I have tried to find out from what the cost was before it was increased up to this point, the percentage increase. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it. But my check across uh, uh, most of our developers is that uh, though it is high and it is one of you know, cost to uh, the developer, uh, it may not significantly affect us, except that any increment in, in production, whatever uh, product you are dealing with, if there's any cost in the entire or the total cost of production, it has some marginal increment effect on, on the product. But because it is one of expenditure, uh, it may be managed. 
But the honest truth also is that uh, I, when I did my check, most of them told me that in actual fact, they've been paying even more than this amount to uh, subcontractors to uh, subcontractors of ECG to get their connections done. Meaning that, you know, ECG have some, some subcontractors who have been given the mandate to uh, help in these connections. But some of them are either extorting or charging more than the regular fees. So some of them said that when they saw the figures, they went like, oh, they are going to be paying more, you know, for some of the services that have been listed there than what has been outlined. And so it was a bit shocking to us. And mm. we think that though it's an increase, unless what they will be paying now will also be more than what we are paying initially. But they honestly told me that the figures that have been listed there, they will even be paying more already for that to the subcontractors who are doing the connection for them. I can imagine that. But let's take a, a, a bit of a drift from this topic to assess the state of Ghana's housing market. Mr. Magaibo, we saw the fact that COVID-19 really disrupted the Ghanaian economy. But yet again, we also see inflation rate increase with factors regarding housing also being mentioned by the Ghana Statistical Service. How is the housing market faring? It's upstage very high lately. Um, if you look at uh, materials like iron rod, cement, and uh, most of the major materials that uh, we import, especially that we import, because of the freight charges and um, lack of it, scarcity of it, uh, most of us are paying a lot more for the building materials than we used to pay for uh, since COVID, COVID came in. So already we are feeling it. And I, I can tell you, iron rods, for example, went up for over 40 something percent as at last year, early last year. And we haven't seen any um, adjustment or any effect of anything that is going to bring the cost down at the moment. We have had stakeholder engagement. We have met government officials to the point of meeting uh, uh, parliamentarians to discuss how best this can be done. This down as we speak. Uh, should things, should things continue to go? As, yeah, should things again? continue the way they are regarding the prices? you know, at the, at the ports and the uh, increase in production cost. Help us understand an estimate regarding the percentage increment in the cost of housing this year. Okay, uh, depending on what the effects are. So, for example, material constitutes the percentage of the price builder for every developer. So the effects of that will be, will be calculated based on that. Mm. And all the others, as that we know, it will have some impact. And so... Every developer is going to look at the various price build-up items and then see where the cost increments are and do the corresponding uh, adjustment to it. Mr. Amigayabo, we're grateful for your input on this uh, matter regarding the house and sector. Here's with the Ghana Real Estate Developers Association. You're still watching the marketplace. Some local contractors are making a case for government to prioritize them over the foreign counterparts when it comes to the awarding of contracts. Figures show that local contractors in Ghana win less than 10% of government contracts for infrastructure projects. Uh, in this special feature, we engage one such contractor rubbing shoulders with his international counterparts. Take a look. They see to the completion of various construction projects in the country. But local contractors feel sidelined in the awarding and supervision of government projects. Building, warehouses and other storage facilities. Simon Kwame Bwaba is among a few local contractors rubbing shoulders with international counterparts. We equally have what it takes to deliver, he tells me. It's about time the government looked at giving attention to the local contractor. If we do so, it will create jobs for the Timi youth in Ghana. Leading a team of local engineers under his company, Simon is concerned about the capital flight international contractors paid in dollars engage in. He's concerned about its economic implication to the country. There is always the capital flight when there is a foreign to those countries like China, Brazil, and you expect the local contractor to mobilize, or we call it mobilization. And when you approach a financial institution or a bank for such facility, they sometimes put in impediments. 
they want to see your past year total revenue. Sometimes they expect to see, let's say, one million dollars mm. in an account of the previous year before they grant you such facility. And you mostly don't have that. And we don't have that. And it's very difficult. But sometimes the, the, the foreign base low interest rate. So they make the industry very uncompetitive for us. And uh, the, I would say that the, for the local contractor, when you approach the banks, they give you high interest rate. Even if they agree to give you the credit, it comes with high years. So does it therefore suggest that you guys are very extinct to the market currently? You are dying off naturally? Not really. We are not so much dying, but we are facing serious opposition and serious challenges. And I think that it was about time. I understand how much Ghana is losing out of the local contracted you know, industry if you know, care isn't taken. To my estimation, Ghana is losing over a billion dollars yeah. annually to this. If this is available to the local uh, contractors, it can help the government's own development drive it can help mm. so currently where do you see the future of foreign contractors sorry of local contractors and why do you want us to like the, the nation to put you guys first what's special about local contractors that we're missing out on i think that there should be there should be um enabling environment for us because for the foreign contractors as i said they have cheap source of loans. Simon Alut has led to a culture of brain drain as Ghana's expert local engineers seek employment opportunities abroad. I attended Takrady Technical University. I offered civil engineering as a course. I graduated in 2018. After the graduation, I had a chance to work with a couple of... Shadrach Oben is a civil engineer he wants situations to change for the government to focus more on local contractors. The experience that I've you know, acquired, I wish the government can come in to support the local engineer that we've been working with. Because most especially when we build the local engineers or local and then uh, culture that we will have with them aside the foreign contractors. Because with the foreign contractors, most especially Chinese and then Greece, when you be with them, because of the language barrier and the other things, you find challenges with them. So when you gain contract with them, being with them at times, you have a little bit challenging. So getting the chance to be with Joyce, being a look around, who will make your work easier for you. And at the same time, I think uh, getting the chance here, you have a contract here going on. I wish government can come in to support the local contractor that we are working with so that things can move on smoothly as compared to the foreign ones here. As you can see, there's ongoing projects here. We've been in the, in the target from the scratch up to now. We've done a whole to develop the talent and then come up with a new thing that I want to achieve. Government, through the infrastructure fund of the APFA capital expenditure, made a total allocation of 441 million cities for roads and other infrastructure. I wouldn't say uh, a blessing in disguise because I have been a beneficiary of this. Because a lot of the knowledge, the skills that I have developed over the years, I've acquired them from foreign companies. But my challenge has to do with the dominance. Government deep in investment in the realm of infrastructure, purposefully under the One District, One Factory initiative, there is so much demand for contractors in Ghana and abroad. Local contractors are therefore making an infrastructural design. I'm Charles Aita reporting for Joy Business. And you're still watching The Marketplace. We're taking a short break. We'll be right back. Just stay with us.
Now, Asante Gold Corporation owners of the Bibieni and the Kubi Gold Mine in Ghana have gone to the aid of victims of a recent explosion at Apache with 160,000 Ghana cities worth of each of the people in that community. Here's more. Residents of Apiati continue to pick up the pieces from an incident that has left a lot of sad imprints on the minds of indigents there. Touched by the plight of victims of the explosion, Asante Gold Corporation, a Canadian incorporated gold company that has recently acquired the Mensin Bibiani and the Kubi Gold containers, refuse beans, bags of cement, roofing sheets, toiletries, footwear, footballs for the children, and information center accessories. One of the directors of the company, Mrs. Nadia Abdulaziz, said the incident should serve as a learning curve for all mining companies. Unfortunately, it has happened. And as Ghanaians ourselves, we feel like it is our duty learning from this as well. And um, I hope that, you know, things are put in place to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Municipal Chief Executive for Pristia Huni Valley Municipality, Dr. Isaac Dasmani, said the incident has thrown the area's revenues of balance, calling for more of such assistance to get the affected on their feet. It has brought a lot of problems because we have just started the year and then we to help our brothers and sisters. So when we are, I mean, I mean, the one week, one and a half weeks that even feeding them three times a day at a cost, I mean, it's, it's, it's other organizations came in to support, but the most of the time, majority of the cost is borne by the assembly. So we are just, I mean, uh, stressed up. We are just stressed up. So, but then we can also leave them like that. We need to continue to support them until they come back to life. So we can, you realize that even since we brought to render their support, to ensure that at the end of the day, we give our brothers uh, and sisters and our brothers and uh, kids and then a uh, defeating life. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumasi. Also, Pomasi Ghana Limited has presented several of its products worth 70,000 cities to victims of the Apiati explosion. Of course, at the Dumasis resettlement camp, put in place concrete measures to help prevent such disaster from happening ever again. We have more in this report. Since victims of the Apiati explosion were relocated to their temporal residence at the Dumasi resettlement site, several institutions and well wishers have been presenting several items of various forms to the inhabitants. Promacida Ghana Limited on Tuesday also used the opportunity to present several of their products worth 70,000 Ghana cities to the victims to help make their stay comfortable. The company presented boxes of cowbell, mixi, onga, yamvita, branded bowls and other kitchen accessories. Head of events and patient described the incident as tragic and sympathized with the victims. The very sad incident that occurred on the 20th of um, January, which was the explosion that occurred at Apiate. And as a business that's been working with the community and we thought it's, it's very important and also given the kind of food products that uh, we produce, it's important that we make the first move of presenting these items uh, as relief items to the victims of the explosion. Then again, I mean, it's just to, to, to state that what we are doing over here is big and to support the fund that has been set up for uh, the reset event and also dealing with the issue from a national level. So these are items that we have presented and uh, we are glad the MC together with uh, the traditional leaders and also some of the community members uh, have welcomed it. While pledging that the company will offer continued support when need be, he asked the relevant institutions to take a cue from the Apiate explosion and work to ensure that such disasters are prevented from happening anywhere in the country. Let's just establish the fact that this is a very sad time, you know, uh, for the incident that occurred and uh, the discussion as we've all heard from different uh, stakeholders, media platform is to make sure that in as we go on in the future, issues of this nature do not repeat itself. And that's what it's... when we do get them. But that's how we end this edition of the marketplace. I'm Charles Aite. Many thanks for watching.